Hello and welcome to the Rich and Simple Living. My name's Maria. If you're new here, I vlog about homeschooling, urban homesteading and home life, which normally is cooking and usually in the air fryer, which is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to make an apple pie. So I tried a little bit of pastry in the air fryer before when I did a cheese and potato pie, but to make fruit pie in it, I've not done. So we're going to give it a whirl and see what happens. The only thing I'm a bit dubious about is the bottom of the pastry. Will it cook properly? I'm considering should I cook it a little bit, the base first before I put the filling in? Or should I just think, oh, we'll do it? Because in the oven, I don't cook the bottom bit first. If I do it in the oven, I just do the whole pie, put it in and it cooks okay. So I'm like, mm, which shall I do? <laughs> I'm not sure. Having not done it before, I'm not sure. But we'll get on and we'll do it anyway. Maybe I'll just do the whole thing and put it in and see what happens. Because at the worst, I can shove it in the oven. <laughs> and I've had to do that a couple of times with other things. So, yeah, we'll do the pastry now. I'm not going to actually show you making pastry because I've already done some. I batch bake my pastry. I make lots of it, put them into rolls and little bags like this and then deep freeze them. So when I need to do anything with pastry, I just get one out of the deep freezer. So I did that, took it out, it's defrosted nicely and all we've got to do now is roll it out. So I'm going to bend you down so you can see what I'm doing. I've got my glasses in the way there. So I've got a bit of flour first, just to flour the side. I like to put plenty down so it doesn't stick. All right, so we'll get this one out. So I wrap them in um, greaseproof paper as well. So I sort of make them, I put a bit of flour around them, wrap greaseproof paper around them, put that, seal it tight into an airtight sandwich bag and I freeze them. And that's how we do that. So we'll just pop a bit on top, <laughs> a bit she says. <laughs> And we'll just roll it out. Now I've had to measure if I can get a plate into my air fryer because normally I do them on plates like plate pies. This one just fits in okay and I've just got room to get my hands in to take it out. So um, that's going to do the job hopefully. I quite often make them on bigger plates but I can only do that if it's in the oven. I won't be able to fit it into the air fryer if I go any bigger. So we'll just do that. Do you know I like pastry, thick pastry. It's no good for you though, is it? <laughs> I use stalk. I use the baking block when I do my pastry. Not that that makes it any healthier, but uh, I think I'll roll a bit more actually. So I've got a bit of overhang. But that's what I normally use with it. Right there and we will put it on right onto the plate press it down I feel a bit of a cheat because I haven't showed you how I make the pastry but um, I'm not sure if in some older videos I have done pastry actually not when I've been air frying but Sean used to do cooking once upon a time as part of a homeschooling and we'd have done pastry then so you'd have probably seen me do it in the machine if you have a look back at those. I'm not sure which section they're under, if um, they've been put under the homeschooling or the cooking ones. But if you ever flick through one or the other, you'll find them if you want to have a look how I make pastry. So there we are, we've lined that nicely, the base of it. Put the plate there in the roll, don't like to waste any. Now, what I think I'm going to do before I fill it with apple is just roll the top so I've got another bag here and we're not going to waste the pastry afterwards so we're going to well what I normally do is I make little pasties with them like jam pasties that kind of thing lemon curd pasties or if you even got a bit of meat on the go maybe some meat pasties just two little pasties with them because I can't refreeze it now, I've um, defrosted it, so I will use it. 
I've actually taken a few raspberries out of the freezer so I might make like um, little raspberry pasties because one of my daughters can't eat apples, she's allergic to apples but she's all right with um, with raspberries so we've got raspberries in the freezer so I thought I'll do a couple of pasties like that. So anyway, I've rolled the next bit out. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to fill the first part with apple. These are apples off our tree last year, a bit wet because they've been defrosting. Don't worry about the colour of them. The colour will come fine and they taste okay. So I am going to have to sort of drain it in the sink a bit first, I think, because it's quite wet. <laughs> That's the only thing when you're defrosting, sometimes you get a lot of water and especially if you've got sort of moisture contented things drain that I cook with my frozen apples all the time I, I, every year we sort of pick them and then freeze them they were nice and white when they came out of the freezer but they've gone a bit brown which they do when they hit the light but we don't worry because it'll be okay if you've got brown apples don't worry about it you can still use them they're not poisonous so we're going to fill the pastry case with the apple i don't know if we'll have too much in there Put that one in it'll go in <laughs> Never have too much apple. Pull that over there, and that's it. We'll do that in there. There. Now, at this point, normally you'd sprinkle some sugar on, but because mine are eating apples, they're off my eating apple tray. I don't put any added sugar on them because they're sweet enough. So if somebody does like them a little bit sweeter, you can always add a little bit of sugar to your pie when you eating it you know just for you eat it sprinkle a little bit on but otherwise the sweet enough and we're not really got the sweetest of tooths in this house as in putting lots of sugar on things one it's not any good for you anyway and secondly we just really don't like a lot of sugar so I'll just leave it like that and put the lid on it so I've just got to wet the outside of it so it will seal excuse me while I go behind you to the tap and just wet the outer edge so it sort of feels a bit sticky-ish you know it's going to stick then So that should do that. Better just turn the tap off. Wipe my hands a little bit. I just swing you around so you can see a bit better. There we go. And what we're going to do is take this bit. This is the bit we're going to use for the top. Make sure it all covers. There we go. And then we just press around the edge with your thumb just to seal it. And that hopefully should hold it in place. And seal in moisture. <laughs> Although that doesn't always work. I'll cut all the excess off it. And we'll put that in with the other bit we've got. Ready to make some pastas. We'll just make a little hole in there for the steam to escape. And you always get the little fancy bit the top don't ask me why something my mum did so i do too right we've got plenty of pastry there that we can do some little pasties with just knead it into a ball somehow it doesn't want to go into a ball but anyway that's all. we'll get this pie now into the air fryer and we'll see what it comes out like Okay, so we're going to pop it into the 
air fryer. Like I say, it just fits. And if you can see, probably not if I turn that fly buzz into my window as well. Get rid of him. So it just fits in there. We'll just turn you around so you can see. Pop it in. Make sure we switch it on. And I'm just going to open the window and get rid of this fly because it's driving me nuts. Go on, be off with you. Thank you. <laughs> right, so we're going to switch it on. And we're going to go at 160. So, um, where are we here? Day, and that's for 32 minutes okay so off we go we'll come back to that in 32 minutes and we'll see if it's cooked okay so it's just beeped we're going to open it up and we'll have a look what it's doing or done I should say um, bring it down a little bit while I just open it. Right then, let's see. Mm. The pastry looks okay. I don't know if you can see that. Pop it down on the edge there. Bring it down a little bit more. So you can see the top of that. Looks nice and brown. Feels okay, hot, so I don't touch it too much. Might have to leave it cool a bit actually before I can take it out of it. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to reach it. Um, let's see, because it's such a snug fit in here. I might be able to actually slide it into the corner a bit. Let's bring you down. Then you can see what I'm doing rather than looking at me and pulling faces. <laughs> ah, got it. Pop it there in a minute. Just move that out of the way. Bring this forward. There, now we can see it. Yep, that certainly looks cooked. And the pastry underneath looks cooked. Um... See that seems to cook nicely it lifts slightly so I know it's cooked underneath that looks good of course I'm gonna to have to wait for it to cool down before we can do any taste testing but we'll come back to it when it's cooled down and we'll do a taste test but in the meantime while that's cooling I'll show you what I've done I took the raspberries a few raspberries I've got and I've done a little pasty there we go, it's getting the light right today. I've done a little pasty, so I'm going to pop that into the air fryer. I was tempted to put it in the oven, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put it into the air fryer. So, because it's still a bit warm, I better just hold on to that. We'll pop it into there. We're going to do the same again with this one. Let's switch it on. We'll air fry it for, um, what was it, 160, wasn't it, with the other one? 160. And we'll time it. This is a bit smaller, so I think I'm going to do it for a bit less. I might just do it for 20 minutes. And we'll see what it does. So that's a little raspberry pasty used, done with the leftover pastry. Pop it on for 20 minutes on 160 and we'll see what it does. And we'll taste test the apple pie when it's gone cool. Right, so it's just going to be, we'll just have a look at this pasty, what it's done like. I'll just bring it out. Looks all right. I'll just swing it down and you can have a look. Seems to be okay. See if we can fetch it out of the pan. There we go. Oops. Don't break me dish in the process. 
right then so that's what my little pasty looks like that seems to have cooked if i could pick it up cooked all right all the way around and that one's for my daughter because she doesn't eat apple so i shan't be taste testing that one i'll let you know what it was like when my daughter tries some but we'll have a taste test of the apple right so the apple pie's cooled down i'm going to take a little slice out of it and we'll see what it tastes like so i'll just swing you down so you can see what i'm doing we'll just um cut it but it slices nice anyway doesn't feel soft or anything oh. like that the pastry well not soft as in uncooked soft but goes through nice not hard as overcooked hard look at that oh look at that oops <laughs> nearly lost you then all these little bloopers packed with apple pastry looks nice that's lovely that does so shall we have a little taste Take a little bit with the pastry as well so I can taste that and the pastry underneath that's what was bothering me um whether it cook underneath so I want to make sure I take some of that so I can see tell I can't get the apple <laughs> chasing it round mm. That's divine. But then I love apple. <laughs> mm. The pastry has actually cooked really nice. To be honest, I didn't think it would. I wasn't sure about doing pastry in there. But that's cooked lovely. I thought either it wouldn't cook, especially the bottom bit, like I was saying, I thought that would be a bit raw. And I thought maybe the top would go a bit hard. But that's lovely all the way through. That's really nice. Um, I haven't put any sugar in the apples because I've used eating apples and that doesn't need any sugar. Now I'll probably add a bit of custard to it. Um, I can have ice cream this weather because it's nice and hot or a bit of cream. And that tastes lovely. You don't really need to add the sugar unless you have a sweet tooth and you like that bit of extra sugar. But yes, that is beautiful. So... Um, other things actually thinking about it and i tend to do it more in autumn time add a bit of cinnamon to your apples so when you put your fill in just sprinkle a bit of cinnamon in oh lovely really autumnal taste you know really nice don't tend to bother so much this time of the year but it's one of those taste cinnamon is when i think of autumn and i like to have apples with a bit of cinnamon so yeah you can add the extra sugar if you prefer it's a bit sweeter i mean sweetness varies between people doesn't it you could add a bit of cinnamon or maybe you've got some ideas what you put in apple pies what sort of things do you like to add to apples let me know in the comments down below so thank you for watching um i'm really pleased with that i'll try and do steer away from apples for a bit now i seem to have done a lot of apples because i did the eaves pudding which of course is apple with a sponge topping I've done an apple crumble that was lovely well both of them were lovely and now the apple pie so i'll try and not do any more apples for a while you can tell i've got a lot to use up <laughs> so yeah that's out for this week um thank you for watching and thank you to all the new subscribers thank you all of you for subscribing and being there and leaving comments i love to have a chat with you all and i love to hear what you've got to say and all your tips and hints <laughs> Um, for what you do in your air fryers or anything come to that because you might um, be one of my homeschool subscribers and you chat to me about homeschool and I love all of the comments and like I say I love to have a chat with you all that's great so like I say thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and I've passed the 500 mark now which was really exciting <laughs> really pleased about that but it's all of you that have done it for me so thank you and now um, I'll be back now next Tuesday with another homeschooling vlog. 
I'm not sure what we're going to vlog about yet. We'll see what happens and what we think, what we're doing. So all it remains to say is have a really good weekend and take care of yourselves. Bye.